Hello, my name is Sean Lambert, and this is our first tips and tricks video for Gary Grigsby's War in the East 2. And the reason I'm making these videos is because if you're a new player coming to this game, or even if you're an experienced player who bought the game a long time ago and then forgot how to play it, um, there's a lot of stumbling blocks to the first couple of turns. And these are stumbling blocks that can cause your hair to literally turn gray and fall out. Um, and one of the biggest ones is dealing with support equipment. And what type of priority should you give support equipment? Where should it go? And what should you do with it? Now there's uh, a couple of different strategies that you could use. But the most important thing is to understand the tools that you need to be able to execute said strategies. So the two main strategies, at least for the Nazis, and really for the Soviets as well, is to use uh, support equipment basically wherever it starts. It just change nothing, lock all the HQ's support equipment so that it doesn't move around, and just use whatever is assigned to them at the beginning of the game until you get through the first couple of turns and then you know kind of where things should start moving. That's option one. Option two, and this is the strategy proposed by Strategy Gaming Dojo, uh, and if you haven't watched his videos, they're great, but he had a kid and he doesn't make them anymore, so he's not really around to ask questions. I'm here, so you can ask me anything you want. If you follow his strategy, it is basically to take all of the support equipment except for perhaps a couple of very important cases and just push it all the way back up to the highest command level that is possible. And the way you do that, if you don't want to watch his video, is you come to the commander's report, you go to the HQ tab, which is the second tab. Uh, the, the commander's report is hotkey C, or you can click on the button under info screens. Uh, you go to the second tab, it's called HQ. Now on this screen you'll see all of your HQ, including your air commands, but for support that doesn't really matter. And for the strategy that we're talking about here, you can do it with no filtering initially. So see at the beginning of the game, this is just a normal game. I haven't done anything to the default settings. Everything starts as a three, believe it or not, uh, for support level. And that's the field kind of in the middle, right next to the leader column. I haven't done anything to this report. This is exactly how you'll see it the first time you load up the game. Now, you'll notice this button here called support level. If you click on that button, it says enter a new support level. And what you want to type is zero. This will set the amount of support equipment requested by each group, whatever it is. It, a group, a core, an army, they all now request zero support equipment. And the benefit of that is we will change one of these, in this case OKH, to be not zero. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be nine, although sometimes it's easier to set it to nine and then you never have to worry about it again in case you want to use the priorities at some point. Uh, and that will push all of the support equipment all the way up the chain to OKH. Now the benefit of it all going to OKH is that if you then want to use that equipment on the next turn, all you have to do, it won't matter what what group you're under, what army group you're under, you can just click assign support units and you'll be able to select from any support equipment in your entire army. So it'll show everything there. And that's great for being able to be flexible right off the bat. You won't have to worry about moving stuff around. It can be a little tedious if you're trying to move individual items around. Uh, say we have this construction battalion here, this road construction battalion, and we wanted to assign it to a different army. The way you would normally do that uh, while you're playing kind of later on in the game is you click on the construction battalion and then you click on the the 
letter of the HQ, and then you can move him around to any of these HQs on here. Now the trick is that it can only be within his chain of command, and that becomes quite the problem um, if your chain of command, you know, if you're pretty far down, you you can only go to certain uh, other armies or you know within your group basically and the downside to that is means you can't transfer equipment very quickly from one group to another group so one way to deal with that issue is to send everything up to OKH and then pull it back down as you need it the other benefit of that is that you won't have equipment hiding in weird places that you, you just happen to miss uh, and you won't be wasting equipment. You basically won't expend any equipment on your first uh, on your first couple of turns until you start bringing stuff down to where you need it. Now, the other strategy, the kind of the opposite strategy to that, is to lock everything right off the bat. So instead of setting everything to be a zero, what we'll do is we'll actually set everything to be negative one which will lock everything and this is also a global setting you can check off but if you forget to check the box at the beginning of the game you can always come into the commander's report and just unfilter everything and set support level to negative one and that will automatically set everybody to locked now when everybody's locked that means they will keep whatever support they already have so like in this case 12 core 12 core has three core artillery an anti-tank battalion three anti-aircraft units some self-propelled stugs um, some pioneers some construction battalions a couple mortars and a rocket so they, they are stacked now because they're locked none of that stuff is going anywhere if they were still set to a three they would try to request three of everything but so would everybody else. Everybody else was also set to three. So if you leave that on the default settings, if you don't change that on your very first turn, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening because there'll be just random armies that get nothing. Um, and that's obviously like worst case scenario. You, say you, you have an army that you really do want items to go to, they won't even be able to the next turn uh, unless it happens to be in their chain of commands, they won't be able to maybe get everything that they need. But if it's all up at OKH, you could definitely get it. If it's all locked, they'll keep whatever they started with, which in most cases, uh, especially at the core or army level, is pretty sufficient. Uh, like, obviously, the armies are going to start with a little bit less because in the Nazi chain of commands kind of order of battle, most equipment is stored at the core level uh, at the beginning of Barbarossa. You know, if you wanted to change that and bring up some some items up to the army, say you have some units that are reporting directly to the army, you want them to have a little artillery support, or uh, you want your army to have any aircraft uh, capabilities, for example, that can easily be done, you know, because the core is below the army, so you can always push that stuff up manually if you if you decide to lock everything if you decide to go the route of sending everything up to okh i would in general recommend uh, that you then spend turn two really thinking about where you want that support equipment to go and if you want to actually expend any of it in the very early game because frankly you might not need to you know the the early game is pretty damn easy for the Nazis, and you're going to need that support equipment very soon thereafter. Um, now, some other, so on the other shoe, playing as the Soviets, it's very similar. Um, the only difference is that, you know, one, the organization is a little bit different. So you're going to have a little bit less in the way of certain types of support equipment but because we're doing this at such a you know a high level it doesn't really matter we're 
we're either choosing to lock everything or to push everything up the chain of command. Now for the Soviets, I would, I'm still kind of on the fence on which is better, but I would tend to try to push everything up. Uh, I mean, that's what I did. That's what I've done twice now on both playthroughs, but I just started a new campaign where I was playing one of the smaller scenarios, the um, uh, Operation Typhoon scenario, and I chose to lock everything instead. So I'm going to try that out and see if it works. It feels like it l works a little bit better, just locking everything right off the bat. And talking to a couple other players, they also think that maybe just locking everything at the beginning is better because then you're spending less time on turn two trying to reorganize everything. Because I did end up spending a long time pulling stuff back down. Uh, I tried to mix and match a little bit with uh, support levels and, um, you know, I, I was like changing support levels based on need. Uh, but in the end, I've now pretty much locked everything. <laughs> it's everything is now either locked or zero. So uh, the, my efforts to try to use the automated system just completely did not work because when it's set to a two or a three or a four or five, it's just it's it's too generic. It it doesn't it doesn't allow you the the fine control that you really need. Maybe there's a point in the Soviet campaign where you have so much crap that you don't care anymore where it goes. But I don't I don't think so. I mean I think you're always gonna really want that fine level of control. And so in my opinion, if you want to do the strategy gaming dojo thing and, and send everything up the chain and then pull it back down, I would recommend first, before you try it that way, try a campaign where you just lock everything, leave it where it is, and then you move, start moving stuff around. Anyways, uh, hope back see you back here on the western front of the Great Patriotic War, the eastern front of uh, whatever the Germans called their war. See ya.